What's going on guys, my name is Matt and about a week ago I was on Amazon looking at graphics card pricing. I think I was searching for RX 6600s and I selected ones with prime shipping, sorted everything from price low to high and to my surprise was greeted with this. About a dozen listings for GPU mystery boxes. These all were horribly rated but I hadn't seen anything like this and these grabbed my attention way more than they should have. These range in price from about $40 all the way up to around $150. They're from a number of different sellers, but interestingly enough, almost every one of these listings use the exact same graphics stating the probability of getting a certain type of card. Now obviously there's no way of checking to ensure they're actually sticking to this prize distribution, and as a wise man once said, if it looks too good to be true it probably is. With that being said, people are buying these as some of these listings have dozens of reviews. Because of all this, I decided to pull the trigger on these GPU mystery boxes, but instead of just buying one or two, I bought 10. After checking out, I spent over $450 to buy all these, so this video wasn't cheap and I was only able to make it thanks to today's sponsor, Luster. I don't know about you guys, but when I buy stuff online, I spend hours sifting through reviews to make sure I get the best product possible. Amazon is filled with fake and paid reviews, so trying to figure out what actually to buy can feel like a monumental task, but with today's sponsor, Luster, you're able to take all the guesswork out of this process. Luster is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best product for your budget. It does all the research for you by analyzing tons of legit, verifiable reviews from sources you already trust, like major tech publications, YouTube videos like mine, and Reddit. This all ensures you're easily finding the best product at the best price. They even compare prices across sites and let you know if there's a sale. Head to the link in the description to learn more about Luster and to add the extension. I highly recommend it, and adding the extension is a 100% free way to support the channel. Thanks again to Luster for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to your regularly scheduled content. After waiting a few days, I got a notification that 8 of the 10 had been delivered, and unfortunately the other 2 wouldn't get here in time for the video. What confused me was the fact that all 8 of these GPUs were allegedly in these 3 small packages. When I think of a normal gaming graphics card, the box is usually the size of 2 of these packages combined. Weighing all these, the combined weight of the 8 cards, plus all their product and shipping packaging came out to approximately 3 pounds and 12 ounces, or around 1700 grams. To put this into perspective, this RTX 2060 Strix in its packaging weighs over 1800 grams, which is more than all 8 of these other cards combined. Obviously, this had me doubtful as to the contents of these GPU mystery boxes, so I thought it was time to start opening them up. Starting with the cardboard box, opening this up revealed 3 smaller boxes wrapped in plastic. Bag number 2 had 4 more of these exact same boxes, and bag number 3, what do you know, had 1 more of the same. These are orders from 3 separate sellers, so finding the exact same boxes and packaging inside each was strange to say the least. So moment of truth time, let's see what I got. Ripping into the first one, I found a small box with a question mark on it. Inside was a tiny graphics card, some bubble wrap, and no anti-static protection. Pulling out card number one, my worst fears came to life. What I found was a low profile card, covered in dust, and with rusty metal. The condition it was in, the small cooler, and the fact the only video output was VGA told me this card was probably ancient and basically useless. There weren't any direct model names written on the card, but after googling the BD3776 code found on the back and clicking through some links, I found this is probably a GeForce 9300 GE. Now if you haven't heard of this card, I don't blame you. Looking it up, I found that this card was released in 2008 and included 256 megabytes of video memory. Just to put this into perspective, I generally recommend 2 gigabyte cards at minimum for gaming in 2022, and this has 1 eighth of that. I may benchmark this card in a few Future video, but estimated performance is actually less than a GT210. So the first card wasn't very good, but maybe we'll have more luck with card number two. Open it up, and I found a card with the same cooler, two extra video outputs, and somehow even more dust and rust. But this one did have a different code, BD3727, which when looking it up shows very similar results, but nothing definitive at all. So I popped off the cooler, I attempted to rub off the old thermal paste, and could see the code 215LKC. C A L A. 
15 FG, which didn't really result in anything meaningful, so I just assumed it was another junk 9300 GE level card and moved on to box number three. Opening it up, I was happy to see at first glance a different style cooler, but that happiness was very short lived. This card, like the last two, was dusty and rusty with outdated video ports, but as a bonus, I got broken mounting hardware and other damage in the form of a bent capacitor and a scraped up heatsink. The N11071 code on the back revealed this is likely a Quadro NVS. 280. This is a card with 64 megabytes of DDR memory, a PCIe 1.0 connection, and a release date of 2004. Somehow, this card overall is even worse than the first two. Opening up card number four, what do you know? It's a graphics card that looks exactly like card number two. So, again, probably a 9300 GE, but this time with even more rust and dust. Card 5 was, you guessed it, the same as card 2 and 4, but surprisingly this one is actually kinda clean, like they actually might have made some effort to make it presentable after ripping it out of whatever ancient computer this was in. Card 6 was looking like another NVS280, but unlike the first one, this one doesn't appear to have been run through a blender. Card 7, opening it up, we found a card that actually looked different from the others and actually has HDMI. With that being said, it did have dust along with missing and loose bracket screws. This time, it had a handwritten code saying G100 on the back. Looking this up, I found it was another 256 megabyte GPU that was released all the way back in 2009. With that, we have one more card left. Card number 8, maybe this one will prove me wrong, and they somehow shoved an RTX 3080 into a tiny box that weighs half a pound. Surprise, surprise, it was another ancient Quadro card with 64 megabytes of video memory, along with a VGA and S-Video output. So obviously, we have no idea what would have come in those last two, but I think we can make an educated guess as to what they'd be. I don't think these cards are really worth throwing into a system to check out, but if you want to see a follow-up video of me chucking these into a PC, and seeing if they can game, then let me know in the comments below. But this video isn't over, I do want to talk about the probability of getting the cards we did. Now I did have to split this order across a few listings, but because these all have the same listed probability, we can figure the likelihood of receiving one of the more premium level of cards. For the sake of this example, I'm going to consider getting one of the higher tier cards as winning. Both these listings state that there's a 30% chance of, in our eyes, winning. So to calculate the chances of winning at least one out of the eight times we purchased a card, we just need to compute one minus the probability of not winning. This simply comes to 1 minus the probability of not winning, which is 7 over 10, to the power of the number of polls, which is 8. This gave us a 94.23% chance of getting a winning card at least once. I can open the last two cards in the follow-up video if you guys would like, which would increase our odds to nearly 98% of winning, but I have a feeling that won't work out very well. So I see there being two possible things happening here. Either one, I have extremely bad luck, which again is entirely possible. Or number two, these guys aren't sticking to their listed winning probabilities. Obviously there's no way to tell for sure and I don't want to get sued, but I think the likelihood of it being number two is very high. So I didn't get any of the higher tier cards, but how much value did I get out of all this? Well after taxes, these eight cards ended up costing over $375. Going on to eBay, you can pretty easily pick up these cards for around $10 to $15 shipped, making the grand total value of these pulls being somewhere between $80 and $120, making our grand total return come out to be a net profit of around negative 70 to negative 80%. I was 99% sure this was going to be the result going into this video, but I still wanted to see what the outcome would be anyway. So should you personally pick up one of these GPU mystery boxes? Absolutely not. I paid an average of $45 per box, but some of these listings go for over $100 and people seem to be getting the exact same polls. I'd be willing to bet that even if you bought 100 of these mystery boxes, you wouldn't get a single good card. Now comes the question of what to do next. If you guys would like to see a video of me checking if these even work and trying to game on them, then let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I think I may try and return all these. Normally, I'm not so keen on buying something to make a video then immediately returning it, but with these sellers who may or may not be scamming unknowing and unknowledgeable consumers, I think I may have to make an exception. Either way, let me know what you think I should do in the comment section below. 
This was really meant to just be a fun slash quick video on these GPU mystery boxes, but I'm also hoping people will stumble upon this video when trying to research these mystery boxes. If you are one of those people who found this video after seeing these listings on Amazon, then sound off in the comments below. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.